Hello and uh, welcome to our event. I'm happy to, to share this uh, with uh, Sylvester, uh, Arkadius and Piotr. We will discuss today uh, about uh, Polish market and what will be the next wave in, uh, of growth for, for Polish uh, market uh, in, in the next period of time. I would like uh, each of my invitees to make a short introduction of themselves and maybe we can start with uh, Sylvester. Hello, uh, my name is Sylvester Dmitrievski. Um, I work in logistics for around 14 years right now. I'm focused uh, mostly on e-commerce and I have quite a bit of experience if it comes to uh, cooperation with fashion companies. Indirectly via logistics provider, I worked for uh, Inditex, Zara brand. For a couple of years, I worked for LPP. They have five of their own brands, and I was able to develop logistic, uh, develop logistics network for the company. Uh, and I was generally responsible for operations, distribution, all of the purchases for the network, etc. Uh, last two years, I worked for CCC Group, uh, which is um, built based on Eobuvia Modivo, CCC, Half Price, and DZ companies. And I do some consulting right now for supply chain and logistics. Okay, now maybe Piotr, a uh, few words about uh, yourself. Hello, Piotr Skobało. Uh, I'm in logistics uh, since 20 years. Uh, running in different, uh, let's say, businesses, starting from production, logistic operator as well. More than 10 years, uh, let's say, being as a head of logistics for different uh, entities, uh, responsible, uh, uh, let's say, from the strategy uh, development uh, up to the strategy implementation, operations, and so on and so on. In uh, different businesses, I was, uh, I was connected with white goods for quite a long time uh, now in a pure e-commerce uh, company uh, selling furniture uh, with different uh, with different experiences in different product groups uh, as well across uh, across my experience uh, that's um, um, that's um, that's it thank you uh, maybe Arkadius a few words about yourself uh, hello everybody my name is Arkadiusz Kawa I'm director of Łukasiewicz Research Network Poznan Institute of Technology and I am a professor at Poznan School of Logistics. Uh, so in our institute, so we cooperate with companies, we optimize processes and we support uh, logistics companies and we do market research, for example, on e-commerce market, on in fulfillment, last mile and so on. Thank you very much. Um, I'm happy to, to be here with uh, my uh, co-panelists uh, discussing about, about the Polish market uh, and what will be the next uh, wave of growth for, for Polish market. Today we'll try to, to, let's say, discuss four main topics. One will be, uh, let's say, if we will have the chance to, to have a, another wave of booming in the e-commerce uh, besides the boom that we saw after the pandemic. Uh, of course, uh, right now uh, there is a slowdown, and I want to to, to see what are the opinion on the, on the table here about this subject. Second, one of the the main topic uh, when we discuss about the uh, e-commerce right now is the customers and uh, what has changed in the customer la landscape in the last few years and what will look uh, in the future, and of course uh, what will be the let's say challenges that were in the past but also in the future with regard to the last mile. I'm happy to, to be here uh, in Wroclaw uh, where we start our journey uh, two years ago when we, uh, let's say, uh, incorporate the, the local branch. And now um, I will start uh, with the first topic and asking uh, each of you, what do you think? Because uh, here uh, the, the question that we, we have on the table is kind of rhetoric. Do you believe that it will be a next wave of growth? And if yes, what people that are involved and uh, of course the organization should do in order to still keep running the e-commerce and be as successful as in, in the past. Uh, who wants to, to start on this question? 
Uh, no, I can start. As I previously said, I currently, let's say, my main occupation is uh, connected with a pure e-commerce uh, company. Uh, let's say we believe that we have the chance to win some market versus even omnichannel companies, but for sure, say, retail companies. Uh, my personal opinion is that for foreseeable future, there will not be an increase in the market that you can call a boom. Uh, seeing a lot of, um, a lot of um, uh, let's say, uh, occurrences on the market which don't keep us so let's say fully optimistic. Uh, however, we see this uh, transition uh, from uh, retail and uh, from uh, omnichannel to uh, to e-commerce. Even with uh, let's say more expensive logistics uh, in uh, in e-commerce uh, comparing to retail, uh, we still uh, uh, we still have um, uh, let's say better cost structures overall uh, comparing to the retail companies. And of course, one might say uh, that okay, the, let's say the uh, presence of of the shop uh, in the city or somewhere is is connected with organic sales and that's true uh, but then again uh, more and more people are uh, let's say feeling more comfortable in uh, in uh, selling products uh, online uh, or, buy or buying products uh, products online so these uh, let's say uh, barriers uh, are uh, being taken down in us uh, i'm in a furniture product group which w you can imagine the uh, decision process uh, let's say for many years was connected to with seeing the product touching the product sitting on the if you are speaking about some chairs or some um, some sofas and so on and so on but this also changes i think it's also let's say connected with how you manage this uh, let's say product uh, products groups as well Sylvester will probably speak more about fashion so uh, the the behaviors of the customers have shifted strongly uh, and uh, people are more accustomed with ordering uh, let's say goods to their home and trying them at home uh, so uh, let's say based on uh, based on uh, on uh, that um, uh, I, I think that uh, e-commerce will grow, but then uh, excluding COVID, uh, which created, let's say, a peak in, uh, in, uh, in this uh, category, uh, we are back to uh, almost single digits, uh, so not even double digits in, uh, in, uh, in Poland. Uh, and if you look at the numbers that we were seeing a few years back, that the trend is that the numbers are not growing as fast as we assumed even before, uh, before COVID. Okay, now maybe uh, Sylvester, add uh, uh, what are the, let's say, your view with regard to, let's say, the, the growth in the e-commerce? Uh, so, I believe that it will grow. I agree that, well, it's possible, it's ob obviously possible that something could happen, but excluding uh, force majeure, mm -hmm. uh, it will grow and it will grow visibly for companies that are not so developed in ecom. If you are still developing, if you are at an early stage of development of your omni channel, you just added ecom. In that case, for sure, you can have hundreds of percent of growth every year. But if you were already developed before COVID happened, probably your network is prepared for volumes far bigger than whatever you're realizing right now. Plus, I think a lot of people is still enjoying the fact that they can go to, to shopping mall and they can shop as they used to before we all switch so uh, fast to e-commerce. So in that case, for sure. And if you want to be able to grow, you need to put a lot of pressure on developing your sales in omnichannel mode because people are already used to uh, picking up their parcels. Uh, they are used to uh, parcels which are being delivered the day after from their purchase, although they became more forgiving. And I remember the pressure before COVID. I remember how, how strong we were fighting to be able 98% plus uh, percent of all of our parcels for the next day. But based on the situation we had in the world for the last couple of years, right now in some cases also because of how much some companies got focused on cost reduction. People are forgiving one day, two days delays. But if it's more than that, for sure you have a lot to work on and it won't stay like this forever because in case if we'll become more stable and we'll get back to the situations we were used to, we'll expect to have all of those benefits of only channel and they will expect to have those parcels delivered as fast as they can. Um, I, 
At that moment, great because they are from uh, 2021. At that moment, the e-commerce in Poland uh, are evaluated around 100 billion uh, Polish loty. Even more, 120. Okay, and the the penetration uh, it ex expected to, to to be doubled from 8% to 17% uh, on 2027. Uh, I, I think this this number also uh, as they expected, they put some pressure on, on the e-commerce uh, because in order to gain some customers, you have to gain it from, from the, let's say, traditional retail. Do you think that it's possible to, to reach this uh, number, to double the, the penetration from 8% to 17% uh, in the e-commerce? I'm not sure if it's doable by 2027, but generally, yes. I think we are far behind our colleagues from the Western Europe and uh, over there you have far higher uh, share of e-com in retail generally. Okay, uh, what is your view, Arkadius, uh, about this uh, okay. topic? You, you ask about the next wave of uh, e-commerce growth. So, we, frankly speaking, I don't believe. Uh, maybe uh, it's possible thanks to the next pandemic, but so we don't know it. and. So they will be still growing, growth, but I I think that will be about maybe 10, maybe 12 percent. For example, last year, as I said, so it was about 120 billion lotus. It was about 14 percent growth. This year, maybe 10, maybe 12, and so that's why obviously uh, till 2027 we uh, double this record, but not from now, but from 2019 because 2019 was about 80 billion lotus, but so we um, we expect that we'd be uh, uh, 180 uh, billion lotus in 2027. Uh, so uh, the biggest problem is that uh, with because uh, we have some problem with uh, structure of the market because the half of the structure is from grocery market, and there is very difficult to. Uh, find you know some uh, uh, some new place for uh, for um, uh, selling products via internet because during the pandemic obviously grocery was very very popular but not now so that's why there is no base to growth all the time so that's why you know the market share is as you said it's about maybe ten percent but I think that it's possible you know maybe twenty twenty five percent because. When you think about retail, so we, we need to think about omnichannels. That's why people swift from, you know, one day so they want to buy uh, via the internet, the other day so they go to the uh, uh, shopping mall and they, you know, they buy some products. So that's why we need both uh, channels. And so that's why I don't believe that, you know, uh, in the future, so there will be uh, you know, one way to buy to buy some products only via the internet. So that's why we need uh, both uh, channels. Okay, thank you very much for, for answering those those questions. Uh, but if um, the the situation will uh, look like uh, we we discuss right now, it's it's clear that it will be a, a let's say a battle to either win or lose the the customers. In your opinion, what are the, the main causes to either win or lose uh, the, the customer, uh, either in the traditional retail or um, in, in, in e-commerce in the next period of time? Uh, okay, so the, uh, firstly, uh, for sure, uh, I, before I answer, I just want to, let's say, uh, come back a little bit, because we need to uh, remember, first of all, what Sylvester said, that the Western Europe statistics are clo are between 15 and 20 percent, but China uh, does uh, more than 40 percent of e-commerce. Uh, so in reality, we have to look also, let's say, in the longer period, so looking at, uh, let's say, uh, um, a few years uh, in the future, uh, uh, I think that uh, still, uh, let's say, this, uh, this growth um, uh, is, uh, is uh, possible. In terms of uh, what you have to do in order to sell, uh, sell uh, online uh, in a correct way, uh, and I think it starts from the, let's say, the, the product itself, 
the presentation of the product. So before you get into the logistics, to the service, and, and so on and so on, you need to be able to show the product in a correct way. Uh, and this is the biggest challenge that you have to overcome in order to win a, a, a customer, especially to win a customer that is uh, accustomed to going to the shop, touching the product, and uh, let's say, uh, and uh, having the direct experience with the, uh, with the product. Uh, so you do it by providing the best information possible, providing, let's say, the, the best pictures possible, the product the descriptions, and so on and so on. So this is this content work is um, uh, is the um, uh, let's say is very important in terms of uh, of uh, whole customer journey uh, in uh, in e-commerce business. Uh, then of course uh, it's um, it's easy as that. You need to have a proper uh, logistic service, uh, and uh, that is the next uh, next part. So you need to have different options. Uh, you need to provide different uh, delivery options. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if it's parcel lockers, if it's uh, pickup points. Uh, if it's direct deliveries, if it's extended deliveries, if it's, uh, let's say, time slots, and so on and so on. So you need to have the full portfolio of different options that you, that you give the customer, because each customer has different uh, needs. Uh, what Sylvester was saying, this uh, chase that we were, uh, let's say, uh, having for the faster delivery, faster delivery, that, uh, that uh, was, uh, let's say, a standard in our job uh, before COVID. So we're chasing to be, I don't know, the cutoff, let's move the cutoff uh, until, uh, I don't know, 6 p.m., 8 p.m., uh, 10 p.m., and so on and so on, and still deliver for, for the next day. Uh, now the numbers, um, um, the, the data shows that, again, the price is more important is a more important factor for the customers than uh, the time so it was uh, already that the time was the most important one but now people are still uh, price co uh, more price con uh, conscious in terms of uh, the delivery cost um, uh, so this is uh, this is a factor and then the whole post sales service that you that you need to uh, provide i'm since many years let's say in my responsibilities i have also the customer service departments claims departments the, the let's say i work on customer experience topics as well so um, uh, checking the the customer journey map uh, the, uh, let's say analyzing the touch points that the customers have uh, with uh, let's say with our companies uh, and uh, this is uh, let's say also also a factor how you manage the post sales uh, service uh, since okay anything can happen and sometimes uh, you will, i don't know some damage will happen or something uh, and so on and so on but by people judge the company and come back to you as a business uh, if you're uh, able to, to to let's say solve their uh, pain points uh, on um, on that one okay sylvester uh, yeah so and um, what uh, what discussions are all about during sales meetings is how to get more purchases from the customers you have plus what can we do to get more of them basically right which means that in case if we're talking about sales within the country and you feel you believe that market is saturated already with goods that you have you need to extend the portfolio of what you are selling and based uh, on my last experience and strategy of Horse CCC Group, mm -hmm. they had a lot of shoes and they wanted to have higher sales also within the country. So what did they do? They created half price, off price uh, model of sales and it's mostly close, which means that the group as a whole is able to sell more because the portfolio of the clients got bigger. So that's one point. Uh, another point, if you will run out of the customers within the country you live in, you need to go abroad. So obviously you start, you start your sales abroad and what you mentioned before, uh, you need to look at the logistics, uh, at logistics at some, as something that adds value. So if you want to be efficient with what you're doing, you need to have your whole network de developed in a proper way which means, although we are not fighting for those hours uh, to, to be able to ship for the next day, um, shipping it out from the warehouse at 10 p.m. right now, it's not the focus. If we want to be able to, live again, uh, to win against the competitors, we need to be able to relatively fast deliver our parcels. So when you will make this step forward towards uh, foreign markets, at one point, if you have big enough volume, of course, 
you need to get closer to your customers. And that is the main idea behind the whole um, process of building up your logistics network. So Poland versus Romania, for an example. Mm -hmm. If you're in fashion, most likely you're selling a lot in Romania. So why won't you take care of customers you have there better than you're doing it right now? And you can do it by creating fulfillment center nearby. It's sometimes called satellite fulfillment center. What it really means for the customer, it means that if they will make a purchase and you distribute, redistribute your goods within your network in the right way, whatever they bought from you, it should be available in the fulfillment center nearby their area. And it will allow you to deliver faster. And it will make logistics the main factor which can make sure that you will, leave, uh, you will win against your competitors because maybe they have similar product, but they won't be able to deliver it as you do from this satellite uh, fulfillment center because they will be delivering it from different country. Uh, okay, um, I, I'm, I'm trying to, to build on, on this point because uh, I have here some notes. Um, what you said, uh, it's true for big international brands uh, which has a, a strong uh, logistic network and uh, they done it for many years and of course right now they try to either expand or consolidate what they, they build in, in the last maybe 10, 15 years. But what about the, uh, let's say, smaller local brands uh, from, from Poland? Because uh, I have here, uh, 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 let's say, uh, a statistic that uh, if they if you ask them, uh, the e-commerce shops from Poland, if they want to go abroad, more than 60% of them, they say, okay, they have the plan to do it, or it's on the, uh, let's say, uh, their uh, this year uh, agenda to, to do it. But do you think that they will be able to, to do it and do it properly? You mean to switch to being operated by a logistics provider, for an example, within the country you want to operate? To, to move from uh, local uh, sales in Poland for cross-border selling, uh, either by using uh, the, the marketplaces or uh, have their own uh, network to do it. I think it's a must uh, thing to do if you want to expand your business. Okay. Uh, what about you, Arkadius? What you believe? Because uh, it's easy to say that uh, in order to, let's say, expand the, the market, uh, you have the two options. Either you win some local customers or you go abroad and do the cross-border. But how easy uh, do you think it, it is to, to do it for, uh, let's say, the uh, small and medium uh, local player in the future? But before asking this question so I can come back to a uh, customer yeah, uh, perspective. Yeah. Okay, because I think that in the case of e-commerce, so we have two things. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, price. So f according to me, so the, now, especially during the inflation, so the price is the king. And the second one is delivery. So I'll explain later. But in the case of Omnichannel, so we talk about uh, something more about experience, one experience. But coming back to, to price, so obviously so the price is most important, so that, that, that's why some uh, talk about uh, half price and so on. Uh, and you know, during, the, during the inflation, uh, economic crisis and so on, so thanks to using the internet, so it's cheaper because you can compare products and you can buy cheaper. In the case of uh, delivery, so uh, in Poland, so um, I would say about two things, about the delivery time uh, and delivery method. In the case of delivery time, so it's one day, uh, one, uh, sorry, next day, so it's standard. But a lot of companies which launch their business in Poland, so don't, and they don't understand that next day is standard in Poland. And if you deliver something in, you know, within five days, so it's, uh, it's not a good idea, and so that's why uh, customers uh, switch to the other company. Uh, and the other one is, uh, as I said, so is delivery method, because in Poland, so parcel lockers, so is the first choice. If you don't uh, offer uh, parcel delivery, uh, so uh, delivery to parcel lockers, so it's very difficult to convince customers to use a different method. So 30% of uh, B2C e-commerce delivery, so uh, are going via parcel lockers. So that's why you need parcel lockers or put on network. 
so it's very important. And in the case of uh, omnichannels, you need one uh, one single uh, experience because a lot of companies don't understand. For example, they use some promotions and some loyalty cards in different way. For example, for online and for on uh, offline is completely different, and different, you know. Uh, customer experience in the case of, of uh, delivery method and return methods. So that's why it's very important that customers so want to you know to, to see only one phase of company. For example, if you want one day uh, order your, your product via the internet and you, the next day, so for example, you can return this product using some you know stationary uh, points. So it's quite normal, but a lot of companies don't uh, don't understand that. But coming back to your uh, question, so how to share this market? Obviously, in the case of Poland, it's very difficult to, to find the new possibility to, to share markets. So that's why a lot of companies are going abroad. Uh, but obviously, so it's very competitive uh, markets in Europe. But in the case of Romania, like uh, other companies like in Scandinavia, so obviously it's easier, but it's very difficult to, uh, to compete with, uh, with local brands. That's why Sometimes, uh, so low price, so it's good method, but so not it's it's not always working. But delivery method and you know uh, this experience, so maybe it's a good reason to convince new customers. But but it's for, as, as I said, so it's very competitive market, and especially now we we have a lot of uh, companies from China and they like Temu, for example, that they uh, try to share market. Obviously, they offer completely different products, but. You know, in the case of inflation and and so on, so it's quite easy to find new customers that they want to pay a uh, very low price. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, I think uh, uh, Piotr has mentioned that uh, in your, let's say, day-to-day -day activity, you, besides uh, on on overall e-commerce, you have in your, let's say, area of uh, management, uh, also the customer support and uh, you also have the customer experience. But can you give me some uh, example, what are the main metrics that you, you, you measure in terms of customer experience in your case? And maybe we, we can share what are the, should be the best practice uh, in order to, to align, especially for, for a company which is pure e-commerce. Okay, so in general, the, let's say the first metric, and this is the the one that uh, that we judge ourselves by as a, a company in whole is NPS, so Net Promoter uh, Score. Uh, so we manage, uh, meaning we judge uh, ourselves by uh, if the, the, let's say the, I don't know if you're aware with this metric. Uh, the question is uh, how much are you willing to uh, let's say promote. Uh, and suggest uh, our company to your family or friends. Yes. Yeah. And so this is the, the let's say the, the answer we are looking for, uh, and uh, this is done with the queries and um, and the service uh, done with the uh, with the customer. Uh, so this is the main one, uh, and this is not only logistics, not only customer service, but it's uh, like a broad uh, metric for uh, for all the company because people can uh, let's say put uh, I don't know something with the product uh, as a, as a, as their objective or as a, as a, let's say. Uh, promoting a uh, topic as well. Uh, so this is the, the main one. Then uh, there are, uh, let's say, uh, there are sets of uh, metrics which are being used uh, for different areas. So I will have a set of metrics for logistics, I will set a, um, a set of metrics for customer service. Uh, for example, how long do it takes to pick up the phone? Yeah, so how long the customer has to wait before I will pick up the phone? How long he will have to wait for my answer? How long will he have to wait for the whole topic to be closed for him? Yeah, for example, in uh, in uh, in um, in uh, in uh, claims and so on and so on. So there are different, uh, let's say, metrics being used in terms of um, of the quality of the service, but also uh, the effectiveness of uh, how we um, how we uh, operate uh, in logistics. For sure, this on time deliveries uh, um, all all uh, all connected with the uh, either transport or, or warehousing um, uh, let's say effectiveness uh, let's say without 
going maybe too much uh, into um, uh, into um, uh, detail. Uh, and in terms of let's say different tools being used to uh, to analyze customer experience, uh, we are working on uh, let's say customer journey maps. So we um, uh, we measure the or we analyze the touch points uh, that the customer have uh, with our organization, and then we are working on uh, let's say different activities that will make this experience uh, more seamless. Uh, so um, um, so uh, so to say. Uh, so we want to take uh, the the main objective is to take away all the obstacles that uh, that uh, let's say disallow the uh, the purchase. So the the full conversion uh, of of the transaction. Okay, thank you very much. If someone wants to add something else, uh, what are other metrics to, to, to be measured in order to, let's say, qualify if you are, let's say, uh, measured properly and how to, to solve the, uh, let's say, the customer experience, which is, let's say, a very, let's say, qualitative uh, uh, measure and uh, it's a very powerful if you unlock the, the reason behind. Okay, so... Uh First of all, whatever you measure, you need to understand the reason why you measure it. And uh, it's an internal discussion uh, for as long as I work within logistics field. Who is to blame? And uh, uh, does it really matter for the customer if the company who failed him was a courier company or was it your people employed within your warehouse? They don't really care, right? It is your customer, he needs to be satisfied. You need to know how realistically, how many of your customers you will be able to satisfy. But uh, you need to have combined score of performance of your warehouse, of your logistics network and distribution. So uh, the whole cooperation with uh, courier companies. And usually, uh, well, in past, I remember when it was a, tra a tragedy when in Czech Republic, and I worked there with one of key players in couriers field, we had 98.1% of parcels which were picked up from the warehouse to be delivered the next day. For me, it was awful because in fulfillment, I'm used to 99.8 or 99.9% of accuracy. So whatever is being thrown at people working in warehouses, they need to be sure it will be ready to be shipped. But what difference does it make if your carrier company will only deliver 95% of those parcels? Even though you prepared them, even though they were passed, they went to the carrier's hub, they never got to the hands of your customers. So you need to be able to track this for sure to know if any element of your network is failing or not. Plus, uh, as you mentioned before, uh, you can track, for an example, amount of, uh, in, per in percentages, amount of contacts that people make per market with your customer service, or, uh, and this is also something between logistics and customer service, you need to understand your returns. So you need to know how many people are returning, how many parcels, how many percent versus sales. Mm -hmm. And you need to understand why. Because customer service can only efficiently work with logistics if they have constant meetings and they work and they, they are trying to improve whatever is failing in those uh, returns made by your customers um, in, in our case uh, what we uh, measure it's uh, what we call click the door meaning that uh, you try to monitor the full service from the first click on the website till the moment you deliver the good to the door and in some cases uh, as uh, uh, for for Piotr where you have the furniture you have to do also after delivery or post delivery services like installation and so on um, but when we monitor the the uh, what we call click to door we split it in three main phases click to avb uh, when you capture the order till the moment you issue the the avb number and the order is prepared in the warehouse then avb to uh, pick up from for courier how many 
hours or how much time you spend in the warehouse and then uh, pick up to to door meaning that uh, how much time you spend on on the last mile and of course in, sometimes it's also um, uh, taking in consideration post uh, delivery services but coming back on on, on the return i have here a uh, 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 very let's say interesting statistic from uk um, that they they say that at the beginning of the year uh, after the peak season um, the returns has increased compared with last year uh, 44 42 percent and uh, there are a lot of um, uh, people which return the product even though in most of the cases um, uh, they have to pay for for these returns um, how how you see it here in uh, in poland because normally the returns are free and especially in the fashion industry uh, you have uh, high returns i think everything should be should be just by its merit so if you are a good customer and it sounds funny but i'll explain it uh, what i mean the good the bad the uh, ugly customer yeah, exactly uh, it means that if you decide to make a return the company which works with you which fulfills your needs for the last couple of years they should cover the costs that is my opinion so you have software to track it you know how many parcels uh, how many clothes shoes whatever this client bought from you and if he's a loyal customer if he has a good track record he should be able to make those returns for free but if you have uh, customers returning most of the goods in that case there should be a different way to approach it and in case of returns if you are constantly buying and returning and there is whole another level of this uh, story because uh, right now in the world we are very much focused on a sustainable development etc so obviously if you will look at it from this perspective you're damaging the environment if you're constantly buying and you're constantly returning without uh, without any thought whatsoever uh, and you're uh, proud that you're using uh, paper straws instead of plastic ones you're a hypocrite <laughs> so i would combine those two and I would uh, very much like to have customers which are aware of the situation in the world and which are aware of the situations of the company. And if you are that kind, uh, that kind of a customer who constantly buys and returns, you should be able to pay for your parcels. Thank you very much. And <laughs> I will try to, to build on this because uh, uh, when the people from the logistic were, let's say, uh, question um, about uh, how, let's say, efficient or inefficient uh, uh, is the, the logistic part, 61% uh, of them, they said that uh, they struggle with uh, inefficiency in the last mile delivery. Either it's a good customer, bad customer, or ugly customer. Anyway, someone has to, to deal with that. And 61% of the logistic companies say that they struggle with the inefficient last mile delivery process. Um, how uh, do you think, uh, uh, Arkadius, that, uh, uh, let's say, besides the, let's say, interaction with the customers, the people which are involved in the logistic part should deal with this uh, inefficiency uh, and, uh, moreover, still be competitive in this uh, very uh, intense, uh, uh, let's say, e-commerce retail market. Yeah, so, last mile delivery is a very hot topic because transportation or logistics or you know, last mile, so it's a very big part of uh, costs, of total costs. So, that's why it's very important especially when we talk about a product that uh, has very low value. For example, we order, for example, very simple products and, for example, product costs about 20 zlotes, but the cost of delivery is 12 zlotes. Uh, but uh, so, uh, fortunately in Poland, so we have uh, all different, all methods of delivery. So, as uh, uh, we mentioned earlier, so uh, courier, so door-to-door -door, uh, deliveries. 
using uh, PUDO and parcel lockers, and obviously so we can use click and collect, for example, when we order products, so we can go to uh, to a shopping mall and we can pick up uh, our order. And in Poland, so because we, we you know, uh, in the case of door-to-door uh, uh, -door deliveries, uh, so uh, we have problem because we, when we uh, order this product, so we are at work, so we are in the gym, at the gym and so on, so that's why it's very difficult to meet uh, couriers, so that's why uh, Poles so uh, switched to uh, to parcel lockers and as I said earlier, so it's very famous. But in this, because we talk about efficiency, so in this case, so it's very much effective because in the case of door-to-door -door deliveries, so one courier can deliver about 80, maybe 100, 120, and during the peak season maybe 200 uh, packages to one custo to customers uh, per day. But in the case of parcel lockers, so they can deliver even about 1,200 parcels to during the day, so to uh, several parcel lockers. So that's why it's very uh, is much more uh, effective, and obviously effective in the case of cost and in the in the case of uh, sustainability. So Sylvester so mentioned because now, as I said when I talk about uh, experience, so more and more customers wants to you know use more friendly products, more friendly deliveries, and so on. So even that they don't want to pay for that, but it should be for free. But for customers, it's very important. So that's why uh, delivery to parcel lockers, even that we have to go to parcel locker. Sometimes we use, for example, our car. But, but, but in this case, I said, so it's very, uh, it's, it's very effective. So that's why I think that in the future, so we use more and more uh, parcel lockers and put our networks. And for me, from my perspective, door-to-door uh, -door -door delivers so should be premium uh, service and extra pay. Even now, so we see a uh, difference between price, between door-to-door -door delivery and uh, delivery to parcel lockers. Obviously, in the case of Poland, so it's quite typical, it's quite uh, different because we have some kind of monopoly because obviously, so we have about seven or eight uh, different parcel lockers operators. But in post, so it has you know the, the biggest share in this market. So that's why he can give you know some prices that customers uh, uh, should accept these prices. But I think in the case of you know expand of these networks so by, uh, by you know Orlan or Allegro and other players. So I think that especially when we talk about agnostic networks that everybody can put. Uh, uh, packaging to parcel lockers, so I think that it would be easier, cheaper, and more acceptable via uh, you know by all customers. But obviously, when you talk only about B two C customers, because when we to, when you talk about B two B, so it's completely different. Um, here, uh, I think uh, if I understood well, um, uh, you, you you mentioned that the uh, the fixed delivery point like uh, parcel locker or uh, PUDO or something like that, it's a better efficient uh, and maybe sustainable way to, to deliver. And you, you, you mentioned that uh, maybe uh, you have to differentiate the price for uh, people uh, ordering door-to-door -door versus uh, pocket locker. But what about, because this is possible mm -hmm. and maybe fair, if you, we, we can discuss about the fairness, in the dense uh, urban uh, area. Mm -hmm. In the rural, I don't think that uh, you will have in the near future, um, the the parcel locker, and the second point, uh, in order to to be also efficient, you mentioned the open network uh, mm -hmm. parcels, uh, but also that option is not a, a short term solution. Uh, how you see it uh, from this perspective, mm -hmm. for the rural area where you don't have the uh, parcel locker, and also to to be let's say because at the beginning uh, the uh, let's say the the parcel locker were efficient but now that there are a lot of players in the market mm -hmm. uh, they compete on the hot spots uh, in the uh, let's say uh, cities and now instead of being more efficient i, I believe that they are, they become uh, little by little inefficient in, in some areas yeah, so it's it's very difficult because so that, that's why we talk about local land in Poland. So because we have about thirty thousand different parcel lockers in Poland, and uh, in a lot of places there are different parcel lockers of different players. For example, especially in in Poznan, so there are places that they are 
three or four different uh, parcel lockers, uh, Orlen, uh, in Poznan, and so on. And uh, I think that because there is no cooperation between uh, those companies, even that Allegro, for example, they uh, develop their own uh, parcel lockers. Obviously, we know what is the reason for that because maybe in some some times of this, you know, switch from uh, in post to uh, to the uh, parcel lockers. Uh, because thanks to parcel lockers, so you can be more competitive. Because as I said earlier, so a lot of customers chose, you know, uh, some some uh, online uh, shoppers only that they provide, you know, the services using parcel lockers. Uh, but I, I think that it's very difficult to to say about open network. Obviously, so there are some uh, some some. Uh, you know, some president of some cities, they talk about, you know, open network and so on, but I think that it's very difficult because there are some examples from other countries, for example, from Austria, from Singapore, but in my opinion, so it's very difficult because you need to so launch something like, you know, in the case of post, that you have only one post box and you put all different letters from different operators, but, but maybe in this case, that we copy this, you know, method that uh, all houses and all flats and so on, so they have some, they own parcel lockers, but the own, but but there's the problem with the ownership. So that's why I think that it's too late to introduce, you know, agnostic network because Impulse, as I said, has uh, twenty thousand, and I think that it's very close to density because uh, in city centers, so I think that is enough. You talk about rural areas. Uh, Impos uh, have more and more parcel lockers in uh, rural areas, uh, but I think that maybe 50,000 50, uh, parcel lockers in Poland would be enough. So we don't need more parcel lockers because there is no, you know, we don't need more and more parcel lockers because we don't need, we don't have such much uh, packaging because every day so we send about maybe three, four uh, million package. So that's why it's not possible, it's not need to, you know, to, to, to have more and more parcel lockers. Okay, but here I, I will uh, ask this question also for uh, Piotr because uh, their company sell, uh, let's say, furniture. Uh, obviously, you cannot deliver the furniture over the locker. Um, how you see that? And um, um, from the, let's say, efficiency or inefficiency in the last mile, uh, uh, besides the, let's say, urban or rural, um, in your case, uh, most of the time, you are not able to, to deliver the goods to uh, or offer the, the possibility for your customers to choose a parcel locker for... Uh, okay, so uh, before I go to, to this product group, ju just to sum up a, a little bit. So the, since many years, uh, the, let's say, providing the service, we are always fighting for the number of places that uh, customer can pick up the products. So it, it was like a number that I have, I don't know, 30,000 pickup delivery options that I provide to the customers. I was counting, I don't know, in post uh, um, uh, parcel lockers. I was uh, counting some, let's say, pickup points from DHL or DPD and so on and so on. So this was a measurement of our reach, uh, especially in omnichannel um, environment. We wanted to provide, let's say, more options for the customers to uh, to, the, to to pick up the, the goods since uh, let's say the behaviors of the customers vary uh, and they are different. Some people prefer to pick up at home, some people prefer to, to let's say, go to the locker or go to a local grocery store and, uh, and pick up from there. Uh, this is the, let's say, the, f the first point. Uh, so uh, I think, let's say, uh, on the strategic level and the development of these options is uh, good to accust accustom the, 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 the needs or to, to address the needs of the of the customers first point second point sustainability I think it's a big po uh, it's a big and valid uh, point uh, um, since the um, uh, the behaviors of the um, uh, of the people will change based on that uh, uh, the uh, amount of uh, co2 created by this courier who does 80 or 100 deliveries per day uh, is um, um, significantly much more than delivery to the one place uh, being 
it a custom uh, mini being a, a parcel locker or some shop and so on and so on. Then the courier leaves, I don't know, 10, 20, 50 packages at one place and he doesn't have to drive around uh, the neighborhood and uh, leave all of them. Uh, so this is a, this is a, a factor. Uh, of course, there is also economic factor behind it. But uh, let's say speaking about uh, the, the trends and the change of the behaviors of the customers, I think that they will be more and more conscious that uh, uh, it's uh, it's more sustainable, uh, and, um, and um, that's uh, that's uh, that's another point. Uh, if you are speaking about the, um, uh, let's say uh, the different product groups, uh, I don't have yet the possibility to to let's say to uh, to have an option to put I don't know a, a big product uh, for, so for, let's say a full pallet load uh, to a parcel local. Although some ca some companies are working uh, on uh, that, I think Astorama or Practiker have. Uh, have a parcel locker, but near the shop when they can uh, leave a whole pallet. Uh, yeah, so uh, so uh, let's say um, the companies are starting to uh, to work uh, on that, but. Again, there are, uh, let's say, single companies which will never scale in that sense because they are not even a logistic operators. There are, let's say, um, uh, there are retail chains, so they are not interested in, uh, let's say, expanding uh, too much. Uh, so for sure, uh, this discussion about the shared network uh, would benefit uh, all of us uh, since we already see, uh, in the, as uh, Alex said, that in one place, uh, literally on the 10 square uh, meters, you have three three or four different options. And if you order it in different shops, then you have to enter the code, enter the code, enter the code. <laughs> so you, you pick up from three or four, uh, let's say, parcel lockers. Um, uh, so, so this is also, let's say, starting to get, uh, uh, to get annoying. Uh, but um, well, if I see uh, in a short period that it will change, no. I think that Inpost uh, is not interested in, uh, in that. Uh, and being the, the biggest player uh, will do everything to defend their uh, position, and their position now is uh, is uh, quite strong versus the the competitors, uh, and even uh, even uh, Orlen, which is uh, which uh, let's say uh, has money to invest, but then again, uh, let's say it's not not their um, core business as well. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, summing up, uh, the delivery options uh, will grow. Um, uh, however, there is a saturation uh, cap, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, and I, I, I cannot judge by the number. Maybe it probably is calculated by the number, as in the retail shops, it's calculated by the number of people uh, per city. But I see in small cities, you are asking, and uh, I'll finish on that, you are asking for rural areas. If you look at small cities, they already have parcel lockers. So, like, I don't know, if you look at a city with 5,000 people, there will be few parcel lockers there. And it makes the saturation, let's say, um, uh, quite, um, uh, quite, um, uh, quite strong uh, already. Okay, but still, uh, uh, if I sum up, uh, there are, let's say, two ways to uh, somehow improve, remove the inefficient in, in, in the last mile. Either we have a conscious client to, to pick up the, the best uh, sustainable option, or uh, you have uh, plenty of option, but uh, somehow um, using or uh, facilitating this uh, selection uh, based on some tools. Uh, and uh, here's my next question. If you believe that technology will play uh, an important role on this uh, last mile optimization. I think it is happening for, for years. We are far more aware of what is going on with our parcel versus what uh, uh, we were used to a couple of years ago. So right now, for, from my perspective, uh, it's an absolute must-have to know uh, what stage of development my parcel already has. In, some, uh, in cases of some companies, they are even spamming you a bit too much with information of status of your order. But... Uh, to be able to work on it, to be able to improve performance on your side and on side of your partners. So in case of parcel which you want to deliver to your customers, it means both your internal logistics, your, your warehouse, plus cooperation with your partner, your career. Mm -hmm. You need to know when your chain is failing you. And only if you're tracking it, only if you keep and constant eye on what is going on, you will be able to 
find where the problem is and you will be able to eradicate it. Okay, if you want to, to add something here, so maybe, sh maybe very short opinion. So, uh, because uh, uh, it was about 40 years ago, uh, Fred Smith, so the owner, CEO, and the founder of FedEx, uh, so Federal Express, so he said 40 years ago that information on package is as important as the, this package itself. So that's why always we need some information on package. So that's why thanks to the, uh, IT, thanks to technology, so we know more and more about packaging, about our logistics processes. But in the case of last mile delivery, so we can you know, combine different uh, methods of delivery, different operators and so on. So it's very useful, for example, when we talk about uh, about uh, uh, merchants, uh, they use marketplaces and they offer a lot of uh, methods. For example, if you look at Allegro, so when you, when you, you know, when you do, to choose some method of delivery, so there are a lot of different deliveries. Thanks to, you know, IT, so you can uh, merge these different delivery methods and you can, you know, um, you can do your business without thinking about, you know, how and who, how you uh, share your information, how connect with different uh, career players. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I think we are um, uh, moving uh, fast to our, let's say, uh, final conclusion. And I want to, to make a short wrap up uh, what we discussed today um, about the let's say Polish uh, e-commerce market and his challenge um, uh, about the consumer landscape and what are the op opportunity. And here we we mentioned that in these difficult times, the price is uh, important, but also. Uh, taking in consideration um, that the market, the local market, it's a little bit saturated. Uh, let's say the merchant and the retail companies should take in consideration the cross-border. The customer experience is it's important and should be, let's say, uh, on every uh, retailer agenda. And by doing so, to, to measure, uh, let's say, end-to-end -end from the first click till the moment you, you deliver the goods. There are still some challenges uh, in the uh, last mile um, and the inefficiency and with, let's say, development that uh, happened in the last years, together with some tools and uh, software in the last mile, you can improve it. And of course, here we, 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 we should count also on the customer consciousness or something like that to be more cautious and uh, user friendly with uh, with the environment but anyway uh, i think uh, even though we answer to some let's say question and opportunities regarding the, the polish market there are a lot of let's say open question that we we didn't have the the chance to address um i will uh, try to to make a short note that uh, based on the discussion that we have team now and also on the information that we, we gather. We want to, to build a more, let's say, comprehensive report on, about the Polish uh, uh, market. And we try to take in account all the major, let's say, key players that are involved. And together with Sylvester, Piotr, and Arkadius, uh, we will work on this report. Of course, because uh, this is our view, how we see to, to solve the problems and challenges in, 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 in this market. Uh, we we should have also the support from the people which are working. This is why we will try to to, to launch on uh, extensive uh, questionnaire to as many players involved in, in in the market in order to to see also their view what they think that are the challenge and opportunities for the uh, retail and the e-commerce uh, Polish market for for the future. And uh, with that, um, I would like to, to thank you that uh, you helped me to have this nice conversation today. And uh, we hope that in the next few weeks to, to have, let's say, the first results of the, let's say, uh, interaction with the players in, in the market and summer at the beginning of March to, to launch this report, which we believe will help uh, every stakeholder involved in the Polish e-commerce market to have a better view what's happening, what they have, um, let's say, as option, solution and opportunity 
in order to still have a next wave of growth. Thank you very much. If you want to say the last words for, for people that watch us. Silvestre. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thanks for having us. Thank you very much.